Hey Canucks fans, I hope you are well. I wanted to check in and let you know that I am alive and well. Had a very busy work weekend, our biggest event of the year. And now that, that the aftermath of that event is kind of settling down, I look forward to some more regular videos in the next couple of days. But look at where the Canucks are right now. After that 6-2 thrashing of Edmonton, defeating Edmonton for the third time in the span of four weeks, the Canucks are sitting second in the Pacific Division, third overall in the league, and it's a wonderful time to be a Canucks fan. Now, I must admit, uh, there's a big part of me that wants to kind of uh, you know, rub it in people's faces, those that don't believe in the team or those that were being very negative about this team. But I also know that the Canucks, although they've had an amazing start, the best start in franchise history, they haven't accomplished anything yet from a standpoint of post season success you know the the season's only only 12 games old now at nine two and one for the Canucks but obviously this is a uh, an amazing time to be a Canucks fan and for those of you that have stuck with the team through the last few years through thick and thin good on you you're with me for those of you that are jumping on the bandwagon that's fine there's a lot of room and as I've always said there's room for bandwagon jumper, jumpers that's how a fan base grows so I'm in no place to judge your fandom, just as you probably shouldn't judge mine, but that, you can if you want. But I want to talk about why the Canucks are so good right now. And I was at the game tonight with my good friend Gene. Um, he was one of our you know, one, uh, keynote speaker for our big youth event that we had on the, on the weekend. And it was an awesome night. I sat with Jasper and Quinn who watched these videos. So thank you, Jasper and Quinn. That was a, that was a really fun night. And I, I got to meet a lot of you fans at the arena as well. Got to get on the Jumbotron. I didn't ask for it. I, I gave my patented thumbs up. And then I just kind of sat back, kind of in, relaxed and, and, and joyful, gleeful, as I watched the Canucks pummel the Edmonton Oilers. The Edmonton, it forced Leon Dreisaitl to take a 10-minute misconduct in the third period, kind of when you need your best players. It forced Jay Woodcroft to get kicked out of the game. I've never seen a, a coach get kicked out of a game. Um, and you can tell that the Oilers are, are unraveling just as the Canucks are really, really hitting their stride. So I want to talk about five things really quickly. Five things that I said prior to the season that had to happen for the Canucks to do, to do well and how all five things have indeed happened. And they were a good start. Best players need to be the best players. Thatcher Demko has to stay healthy. The whole team has to stay healthy. And their penalty kill has to be better. So let's talk about each of those five things very quickly. And I, throughout this video, type some comments down below. I would love to read, react, and reply. And let me know if you agree with these five factors. And there's other factors too, of course. Philip Hronick, depth scoring, like PS, uh, PS Shooter, I called him on, on Twitter today. There, there's PS Shooter. There's Phil DG Sexy, and many other names that I've come up with. But let's talk about these five. The first one I was a fast start. We know last year they got off to that horrible 0-5-2 start and they could never recover. They were basically out of the playoff picture by this point last year. You could say that about Calgary and Edmonton this year. And it's sure nice to be on the other side. 9-2-1. and one. The best start in Canucks history. The only three games that they did not get points. The bad loss in Philly, third game of the season. That's probably the worst game of the season. Then they, they lost to Tampa Bay right after that Philly game. And then they lost in extra time to the New York Rangers. And that's it. They've beaten everyone else they played, including a good Florida team. They've beaten St. Louis. They've beaten Edmonton three times. They've beaten San Jose at least once or twice. Uh, Nashville twice. So I think that makes up... And, and Dallas, a really good team in Dallas. So the Canucks, they haven't played all the best teams in the league so far, but I can't wait until they do. So number one, they've gotten up to a really good start. They are sitting at 9-2-1. and one. That's a 792 points percentage after 12 games. Already... They are seven games over 500. And remember, I've always said they got to be 12 games over 500 by the end of the year. They have to end off with 94 points. You could say they 12 games over 500. They need to be two games over 500 every month they play. October, November, December, January, February, March. Six times two is 12. They are already seven games over 500. So that all they have to do just to make the playoffs is to finish five games over 500 in their final 70 games. Just five games over 500. But I don't think now, now that I've seen this team play and dominate some really good teams or teams that are supposed to be good, I don't think it's enough to just say, well, I hope they get a wild card spot. They should be aiming for Vegas for top in the division and getting home ice advantage through the playoffs 
or at least a second or third place finish, uh, LA is going to be there as well and not just squeak in the playoffs. So number one, a great start. Number two, the best players had to be the best players. And of course, we're seeing that Elias Pedersen leading the league in scoring. I say you give Pedersen a $100 million contract. I've said this for the past month. Eight times $12.5 million a year. Make him a $100 million player. He will sign here. And now, and then you lock up Hughes in a couple of years and then you're set. You're set. So Pedersen leading the league with 21 points um, already. Quinn Hughes leading all defensemen with 20 points after a four-point night against Edmonton. Thatcher Demko leading the league in wins. He has seven wins already in 10 starts. So already uh, our three best players are leading the league in their respective categories. And then you follow that up with a wonderful secondary cast of characters. Brock Besser, 10 goals already. JT Miller playing more than a point a game. You have Philip Hronick uh, being, a, being a revelation on the blue line. And then you have the depth players as well. So our best players are certainly our best players. Yet another reason why the Canucks have started so well. Number three, Thatcher Demko had to be healthy and play well. And obviously, he's doing all of those things. Like I said, he's leading all goalies with seven wins. He has a 948 save percentage, a 1.61 goals against average, two shutouts already. And in beating the Edmonton Oilers tonight, he made 40 saves on 42 shots, many of them spectacular. The only way they could beat Demko was really by tripping him behind the net or by kicking the puck in the net. Uh, just amazing. He's as good as Petey and Hughes have been. They both credit Demko as being the best player on the team. And yeah, I, I think you, you can't argue with that from a standpoint of without Demko, the Canucks would have been down three, four, five, nothing. And not, not talking about DeSmith and just without a, 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 a spectacular goalie of any sort, the Canucks would have been down at least three or four goals by the midpoint of the first period already. So number three, Thatcher Demko healthy and playing well. And we see him, we see both of those things happening right now. The fourth one was the overall health of the team. And yes, uh, Ilya Mikheyev had a slow start to the season. He came in a couple games late, and we ha still haven't seen Teddy Bluger. But aside from that, the team has been relatively healthy. They've only cycled through a few forwards. It's usually Jack Stadnika or Dakota Joshua as the extra. And then we're just waiting for Teddy Bluger to come back. And then on D, you've run the same six for the longest time in Hughes Hronick in Susie and Myers and in Cole and Friedman after that trade for Friedman. And then, yeah, and you, so you haven't really had to do, you don't have to worry about Juleson or McWard or Hirose or Willanen just yet. So I, I don't believe in jinxes. I'm not worried that I'm talking about them being healthy right now because they are healthy. And that's a huge reason why the Canucks are performing so well. And finally, 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 their penalty kill. We know how bad the penalty kill was last season. It's not amazing right now, but it's a lot better than it was last season. In fact, it's it's clicking at about 77.3%, which is still pretty good. That's more than three out of four. Granted, only puts you, it still puts you in the bottom half of the league, but at least in like 17th or 18th as opposed to dead last. So the penalty kill has been a lot better for sure. More structure. Better. All the players that the Canucks brought in over the offseason and then even throughout the season, have, have they can all penalty kill. It's Susie. It's Cole, it's Bluger who hasn't played yet, it's Suter, it's Lafferty. It's guys like that that have made a massive difference on the penalty kill. And you know, while we're talking about penalty kill, we might as well talk about the power play. Canucks power play is third in the entire league at 32.6%. I love it. I love having two right shots on there in Besser and Kuzmenko. I love the movement, how it's not just Hughes up top and Petey and Miller on the wings. It's guys cycling through the middle. It's guys cutting across in front of the net. It's two layers of screens. It's so many, many good things. So the, not just the penalty kill, but the Canucks special teams have been very good. You know, I haven't even mentioned Rick Tockett yet early leader candidate for maybe Jack Adams, uh, coach of the year, Jack Adams winner. And so many, and like I said, the depth of, 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 of Hronick, uh, PS shooter of, of other guys. Like, uh, I think Lafferty has been a really good Mark Friedman, a very si uh, quiet, a great addition and Casey DeSmith, um, bolstering the, the goaltending. So now there's about nine or 10 reasons why the Canucks are playing so well. So, uh, let's be realistic. It's, we're not going to play at a 792 points percentage for the entire season. We're going to go through a couple losing streaks throughout the season. We might have to suffer a couple injuries, but the Canucks at least have built up such a big, big, uh, you know, uh, lead already on other teams that they should this season be able to withstand, uh, depending on the severity of certain things, but they should be able to, to withstand some adversity for sure. 
and just another sign that this team is maturing. So I gave my five main reasons that I talked about before the season started. I've addressed those. Then I talked about some other ones like talk it, like depth scoring, like, uh, like uh, and other things like that. Um, so I'm happy. I hope you're happy. Let's enjoy this. We have, uh, you know, a road trip that shouldn't be too crazy with the three um, Eastern Canadian teams. So let's see what happens. For me, for this channel, um, I'm looking forward to trying some new things over the long weekend, uh, for sure. But from a, t a point of still wrapping up my busy work, uh, work things, I have one more big event on Thursday night. So I, this is my plan. My plan is to stream Wednesday night and Thursday night at 11 p.m., and then try some things over the long weekend and get back into the flow of my daily shows starting next week. So thanks for sticking with me. Not sure how much you've missed me. I miss you guys, and I appreciate your support. Leave a comment down below, and let me know your thoughts on how the Canucks are playing right now. Shout out to my sponsors, Van City Experts Real Estate, Perform and Transform, Personal Training Weight Loss. Thank you, legendary Lucas Gates, legendary Carol Bovalander, legendary Andrew Chang, Hall of Fame and Franchise members, and thanks to all of you for watching, for liking, and subscribing. On your way out. Like, subscribe, leave a donation, become a member, upgrade your membership, and definitely leave a comment below how you're feeling about this Vancouver Connects team right here, right now. Stay safe, stay healthy, take care of yourselves, and take care of each other. God bless, and go Connects, go.